Hi guys, it's Dominica. Welcome back to my channel. So today I'm in a totally different setting. I'm actually in my parents' house in Poland and I figured it's a great time to make some Polish food together. So some time ago, some months ago, one of you guys actually left a request in the comment section under one of my videos to make some Polish food and I thought it's such a great idea. And actually that person wrote that her boyfriend is Polish and she wants to make some Polish food for him and I thought it's so 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 sweet. So that's why all the dishes that I'm going to show you in today's video, which I'm not exactly sure which ones it will be. We'll see where <laughs> this video will take us over the next week. But basically all of the dishes for sure will be easy to make and the uh, ingredients you can get in different countries because we have so many dishes that in ingredients are specific for Poland and it's hard to get it in other countries. So I want to make sure that all of the dishes that I show you you can buy the ingredients. And also all the dishes I'm going to show you will be dishes that we make on a daily basis. I've seen so many videos on YouTube that the dishes that are shown are those which are not really on our tables in everyday life. They usually take way more time to make and our mother's generation, you know, was working, didn't have time to be in the kitchen for hours making food. So the dishes that I'm going to show you in today's video are those that we grew up eating on a daily basis. Something that you came back home from school and was on the table. Something very, very homey and I hope that you're going to enjoy today's video. If you do, please give it a thumbs up so I know to make more videos like this and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss them and uh, let's get started so the first dish that i'm making today is actually kotlety milone served with potatoes and miseria Widzicie? This is my brother, seven-year-old brother. He's gonna be in the background. So, <laughs> kotleti milone is basically minced meat cutlets, typically served with potatoes, and miseria is a cucumber salad. And typical Polish dishes, just as many European dishes, are a piece of meat, potatoes, and some salad. So that's what I'm gonna be making. So what you need to make kotleti milone is, first of all, meat. I have 400 grams, and typically I think we're supposed to use 50-50 pork and beef mix, but I have turkey. I just like the taste more, and I think it's a little bit healthier. Then the next thing is one onion, one egg, then rolls, <laughs> roll like this, and uh, it's supposed to be dry. So when we have, whenever in Poland we have leftover of rolls, we just stack them in a shelf, and it dries in the darkness. So don't be surprised if you're in a Polish house and you open the shelf and you see this. If you're in a hurry it's fine to have a dry one, fresh one is also fine but it's better to have a dry one and you're also going to need a little bit of milk to basically soak the bread in it. Then you also need typical stuff like salt and pepper and the final ingredient is breadcrumbs however I don't seem to be able to find it. Then for potatoes we need potatoes and for miseria we need cucumbers and it can be like one typical long, long one or those are the ones we have in our garden so I'm going to take two of those and you're also going to need a little bit of sour cream I have this one which is 12% and it's a little bit I think it's like a watery sour cream <laughs> but basically that's what you need you can also sweep it for natural yogurt and you're also going to need a little bit of onion or uh, you can also exchange it for green onions I will just take some part of the onion from the meat I mean before putting it in the meat then you can also put some dill in it which I personally really like but it wasn't in a store so Let's get to cooking. So the first step is that we're taking the bread and we're putting the milk in it just like that to just do it halfway and then you can swap it over, you know, so it softens up. And meanwhile, while it's soaking, we're going to connect all of the stuff together. And we start from shredding the onion. Once it's done, we're taking the small bits later on for miseria and we're leaving the rest over here. Of course, we're cleaning the whole thing to make sure we get all of it inside. Now we're taking the meat and putting it into the onion basically. It's a good time actually guys to take your bread and just switch it over so it's soaking from the other side as you can see at this point. We're putting the egg in. Now we're taking some ground pepper and seasoning it, some salt. We're taking the bread that we have and we're kind of squeezing out the milk. Okay, mine is not done yet. As you can see, it's still hard pieces. So I'm gonna put some more milk. So it's supposed to be this really, really soft mush. It's not one yet. It's one from the one side actually. I can scrap it up as you can see. This is how it all should be. It's not because some of the milk got soaked up, but it's coming out. <laughs> 
going to put those bits in from the bottom, which worked. So now it's done. So I take it like that and take out the milk. You use a lot of your hands in our Polish kitchen. Now the most annoying and time consuming thing, you have to make it kind of all together with your hands. You have to do it for five, four or five minutes, basically for it to connect. I usually start with my fist and then just, you know, twist it around and just kind of, yeah, basically push it down like that. I always love the noises that it makes when you do it, but yeah, this is how it sounds because of the egg and you connect it all like that and yeah, just push it in, twist it around, do it like, I don't know, pet it, I don't know how to call this movement, but you basically go like that for a few minutes. Getting it off your fingers. When I was a child, I was licking it. Don't lick raw meat like this with raw egg. Not a good idea. Now I'm going to show you how it's supposed to look like after it's done, so you can tell for yourself, you know, if yours looks the same. This is it, this is the meat. It doesn't look crazy appetizing, perhaps, but that's sort of what you're supposed to have at the end of the process. Now it's time to peel the potatoes and do the miseria because frying the meat is the least time consuming thing out of all of it. So now we're taking our potatoes. It's a little bit hard to know how many potatoes one person will eat. I think if it's a potato like this, covering my fingers like this, I would say four per person. I think that's like a safe estimate where it's a bit hard to know. Now that it's peeled, basically it's time to get to boil. So I'm going to first freeze it out and then put cold water over it. For some reason, cold water is better. So we're going to get it to boiling. We're starting the miseria right now, so I'm taking my cucumbers and some people want to peel their cucumbers before they eat them, it's perfectly fine. I keep the skin on, it's also perfectly fine. Just cut it here in half and cut out the endings, they're not nice, no one wants to eat the endings. And then with the rest you just go. Now that we have a chop, we take some salt and we have to pour some in. And now we basically want the juice out of the cucumber, so salt helps it with it. I like to squish it a little bit like this and then leave it by itself for like 10 minutes for the salt to take out the water from cucumbers. So the potatoes are boiling and I've just salted them and basically you wait with salting the potatoes until after the water starts boiling. Apparently when the water is not salted it boils faster so when you salt it it boils slower, like it takes slower for it to start boiling. So I've just done that and that means that it's time to get to our meatballs. So what we need is a big frying pan, big flat frying pan, just like this one and I'm gonna put it here on the stove. We're taking oil and we use just this very sunflower seed oil. Very, very, you know, not a good one for you, but that's traditionally how you make it. And you put it hefty over here and you're waiting a minute or so for it to heat up. And meanwhile, we can start with our meat. But before I do that, I actually found breadcrumbs over here. So I'm going to put a little bit on a plate, just like that. And now I'm wetting my hands. I just took a glass of water. I think this is the simplest way. We take a spoon like this of a meatball, uh, I don't know, of the meatball thing. And that by itself is not enough. So I'm also taking a little bit more and I collect it together. And then, you know, you take it in your hands, just like that, making a one small bowl. <laughs> and now we are flattening it up. We want it to be, you know, a little bit like a burger patty. So this is the shape that we have, a little bit like a palm of my hand. And now we're taking this into the breadcrumbs and just uh, like that. So we go with the first one and we get the party started basically. <laughs> Let's get it started. Huh? Let's get it started. Now it's time to do the flip. I'm going to show it for you. Oh, well, this one not done yet. Let's check on the potatoes. So basically, you know when they are done is when you put a fork in it and it comes smoothly through. That's how you know that they are done. Let's see. Yep. 
this is done definitely done let's turn it off so while the meatballs are frying it's time to finish off our miseria so if you want to take out the juice just like that now we're putting in some of the onion that we had left from the meatballs a little bit of paper and our sour cream uh -huh. Should have been thicker, so I'm gonna put in some yogurt. So I took some of the natural yogurt, which is thicker, so as you can see, I'm going to put it in. Let's mix it up. Miseria. Just like this, that's our salad. Not so this chicken, so? Not so this chicken. Sorry, it's not nearby. Everything is done and it's time to show you the final result. So here we have it. These are our cotletti milone. So basically you wait for them to go this dark brown on the both sides. And that's how you know that they are done. Here we have potatoes and I just have boiled potatoes. But just so you know, you can put milk in it and you know, mash it. Or put butter in it and cream and mash it. I like it clear just like this. And our miseria. Voila! After trying it out, my Milone was really really good. I'm really happy how it turned out. However, my Miseria wasn't perfect. Basically, I chopped the cucumber too thick. It's supposed to be as thin as possible, almost like a paper. Just the thinnest you can go, that's how it should be. And I've also read afterwards that you should use lemon. I haven't done that. I think it would make it a little bit better. So, uh, and also the cream. You're supposed to get the thick cream from the beginning, not the soupy one. But anyway, it's learning, you know. Practice makes perfect. It's gonna be fine. And today we are making the high of Polish cuisine. I think that's the best way to describe it. And I'm talking about rosu. And rosu is basically our Polish broth. It's the heart of Polish cuisine because we eat so many soups. Holland, our the biggest meal of the day. So the dinner, we actually eat it sort of after lunch time. So we don't have lunch. Between 1 to 3 p.m. we have obiad and that's our biggest meal. So for obiad, typically you'd have a soup as the first, first dish and then you'd have a proper meal. So the soups are a big part of our cuisine. And now let's move on to the food. So what you need for rosso, first of all, you need meat, okay? You need a meat base to start boiling it on and I have two chicken thighs with bone. Basically need some chicken meat with fat on it. So chicken breasts are not gonna make it because you need a little bit of fat to melt it out. And then the vegetables. So you need either onion or a leek. And because in my garden we have leeks, I'm using leek. And then you're also going to need a few carrots. I have three carrots. And you're going to need one or two parsley. And then you're also going to need a celery, but a celery like this. And I'm not gonna use the whole one. I'm gonna cut out like half of it. And for the spices, it's actually really, really important with this soup as well. You need one bay leaf. You're also going to need a few of this. And it looks like this. Come on. Focus on. So uh, yeah, small things like that. And in Polish, we call it English spice. However, when I looked in Google Translator, it said old spice. So, and of course, you also are going to need salt and pepper. That was everything that you needed for the broth. However, we have to serve it with something. So we always use noodles, and those are my favorite type. They look like this. And uh, it's called filini noodles. So it's basically a little bit like a spaghetti, but it's all chopped out like this. But if you cannot find this type, it's also fine with macaroni. Any type of really small noodles will do. And then to make it pretty, you can also chop some fresh parsley on. Let's make our broth, because it's gonna take a few hours. So we have to grab ourselves a huge ass pot and we have to clean out the meat, so wash it. This is the situation inside, so this is enough water for now. While we're waiting for it to pour, we can start peeling our veggies. So I'm gonna start with the carrot. And I don't know how it is for other Polish people, but I mean, in general, also it's a very Sunday dish, very after church Sunday dish. So whenever we'd go to visit my grandma, there was always Rosso on a stove and it's sort of like my memory of her that we were coming over and she was never ready with the obiad yet. 
so we would go to the kitchen where she was and she was always there with the rosso. These are my veggies and also the fun fact, we call those Włoszczyzna in Polish and Włochy means Italy. There was this queen Bona, she was Italian and she moved to Poland when she married a Polish guy and she brought a bunch of veggies to her from Italy which is why we call this type of veggies Italian veggies basically anyway. So this is our chicken now, it's about to start boiling but not yet. As you can see we're getting this stuff all around. So we call it szumowiny in Polish and it's basically protein that's coming out of chicken and we have to collect it before we put the rest of the stuff in. Now you can see it properly, now it's boiling. So this is the soup now on, maybe you cannot see it well, but I cleared out most of it. This is how you know, the glass looks like, so now it's time to add everything else. pepper I'll wait later on but for now I'm going to put four of those the allspice and the bay leaves so we actually have a fresh one that we picked up on our holidays in Croatia oopsie so I'm gonna put because it's so small like three maybe here is our soup and I'm going to cover it only partially. My grandma told me that if you cover it fully, it's not gonna be clear, but you know, not clear. <laughs> Mentne. I don't know how it is in English, but this is the reason why I'm going to cover it just like this to still leave a lot of space and my rosso is never clear. I'm doing everything exactly how my grandma told me. Same as my cousins, but it's not exactly the same. I guess the magic is just not be there and I'm going to leave it here for an hour and then come back with salt and pepper one hour later it's time to put some salt and pepper and also add a little bit of water where is the pepper it's over here let's put a few I wish you could feel the smell over the camera because it smells like home I think that's how it also smells to me and I guess to many Polish people it smells like home, it smells like Sunday. Let's leave it alone for like an hour more or so. I think I might boil pasta now. So it's ready. My brother should be done playing video games soon, so he might need so let's do that. One eternity later. It's officially done, a few hours passed by and already kids had a taste test, my brother with his friend, and they ate it. So I guess it went fine. Here we have it. Home goodness. Ooh, and I will also show you how it looks like on the plate and here we have it the final result the heart of the polish food <laughs> and that's it for today i'm going to dig into the soup and i already know it's good because i tried it and the kids approved it i'm going to see you tomorrow with the next dish Today it's time to do something sweet and we're going to be making racuchy, which is a very Polish thing, again. A little bit of taste of my childhood over there. And the ones I'm going to show you today are not those 100% traditional ones, they're with a little bit of a twist and it's because those are the ones that my stepmom did a few months ago and they were the most delicious racuchy I've ever tried and they come from this cooking book. So this is like a boy, his name is Mateusz Truszkiewicz and he won master junior in Poland a few years ago and he's from my hometown so we had a little bit of a local pride when he won and the recipe is from his book just so you know it's not my own the only difference is that in the recipe you're supposed to bake the apple for an hour you can do that if you want to however I don't have time and in the all of the other recipes the apple is raw so you know it's fine if you do it raw this is what we need four spoons of uh, normal white flour one packet of vanilla sugar one egg, three spoons of Greek yogurt, one apple, one spoon of honey and two spoons of butter that we're going to fry everything on and I have some blueberries for decoration and uh, I might also have some powdered sugar, usually decorate them with powdered sugar and that's everything that we need so it's very very easy because all we have to do is connect everything and fry okay so that's a very very easy thing 
So I'm going to start with the apple and traditionally you're cutting it, you're peeling it off the skin and cutting it into very small cubes. I personally dislike having chunks of apple inside. I prefer to have it smooth. And actually this recipe also has it smooth. So in this recipe, after you put it for one hour to bake, then you're blending it. I'm not gonna do that because obviously it's raw. It wouldn't blend super well, I think. And I don't think it's necessary. I'm just going to shred it and it's going to be fine. I'm going to basically add everything it's super easy but I will leave flour to be the last one to basically use it accordingly to the accordingly to the consistency so first the egg then all the powders Greek yogurt honey and then flour And this is the consistency, so it's rather thick. Let's fry those babies up. So we take honey butter, butter, and wait for it to melt. I'm going to use normal tablespoon. I should probably mention that I've never done those by myself. So I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm just hoping it's going to fry. Trying to make something circular, I guess. Let's try to flip one and see. Okay, they're done. Oh, yay. Okay, let's flip all of them, but I have to use both of my hands. But those are the nice color. And this is how they are now after flipping. This is the perfect color and I think they are done. And this is how it looks like after a little bit of decoration. So I just put some powdered sugar and blueberries. And this looks so nice. I <laughs> cannot wait to just dig into this. I'm doing the taste test and guys, this is so good. I'm really happy with how it turned out and I'm really happy that I shredded the apple instead of chopping it how everyone does that because I don't like chunks this way it's really nice you can feel the apple but it's not chunks in your face and that's everything for today's video okay maybe I should chew that's everything for today's video let me know if you prepared any of those dishes and how it went I'm actually curious as you can see in this video I'm not a professional cook it's my first cooking video on YouTube I just like cooking not necessarily the best at it but I try so let me know how it went also let me know if there are any dishes you would like me to film and uh, I hope you're having a wonderful wonderful day and I hope to see you again in one of my videos bye bye